Hello, this is Matsi, and welcome to my tutorial on building two-story modular structures in Smile Game Builder. I'm going to start with a demo of my modular structure. So this is a house I built purely of objects, with the exception of a couple things, which I'll get into in a bit. I can be blocked by the house, so I can't walk just through the walls. And I can even go in through the front door. It goes to first person view because then I can actually see what's inside the house. You can see I have a ceiling, so I cannot see what's above my player's head. And I even have objects that I can interact with on the first floor. These other objects, like the tables and the walls, do prevent my player from walking through them. Let's go take a look at the second floor. Here's my second floor. As you can see, I also have objects on this floor, and my player is able to walk just fine on the floor up here. And in addition, I have a treasure chest that I can also talk to. This is a pretty simple structure that I'm using for the tutorial itself. Uh, in theory, you could create many other sorts of interactions with the objects in this house. In my case, I just wanted something I could use to demonstrate some of the basic functionality. Before I get started on the first part of this tutorial, I want to take a second and walk through all the parts that I'll be going through during this tutorial series. This tutorial is broken down into four parts. Each part will take about 15 to 20 minutes, and I will release each of these parts as I get done with them. In part one, which we'll go through today, we'll look at the modular objects that make up this house and how to build the base structure. Part two, we'll look at putting the objects inside of the house and putting the ceiling on top. And with part three, we'll put some objects on the top of the second floor and show how we can get events to work both on the first and second floor with this setup. Part four is what I call the problems playground. This is what I reserved for all of the little problems I ran into during setting up the house and the complexities around putting a second floor on top of other objects. And each of the other parts, I do not go into a lot of depth on the problems. I rather show what I call the happy path. And in this section, I'll spend more time on the subtle things that you run into when you try to overlay objects and get them to interact with the player properly. Now let's roll into part one of this tutorial. In this part of the tutorial, I will be looking at the modular objects that make up the house, along with building the house and some of the benefits that come with the structure that we'll create. Down here at the bottom, you can see all the various objects that make up this house. On the left side, for instance, we see a corner piece and in the middle here, we see some variations of the doors, along with some walls that are various heights. All of these use a scale based upon the standard one by one by one tile height, like so. And I put this wall up here based on tiles just to see a comparison of what a standard small game builder tile height looks like versus the objects I created. You also may notice that these walls are not the standard full height, width, and depth of Small Game Builder tiles. I did this on purpose because I preferred the aesthetic of walls that were not so large, and I think it allows for a little more creativity in what the player may see. You can also see that some of these walls are 
four height and some of them are two height tiles. This is so I can have some modularity in what I decide to put on top of other wall pieces. But in some cases, I really only need a wall that is four height. It doesn't really matter in the end. I could have simple tile objects that I can stack on top of each other, or I could have full pieces of wall that I can place modularly. In this case, I went for some combination that lets me get a house-like structure in the rough shape I wanted. We can see here on the right, we also have windows. These are very plain and basic, but they were good to show that you could make a house with a window and then you can have the player actually look inside of the house and see actual objects inside as opposed to the black box that the standard houses come, that come with Smile Game Builder provide. Here at the bottom we have the floors. I have both ground level flooring and second level flooring. The different shapes don't exactly matter. I just chose some different sizes to make it a little easier to build out the flooring. You may wonder why I put floors on the ground. And in some ways, I guess I could make some tiles that fit the ground. In fact, I did do something for this tutorial just to show what it would look like. But there are a couple problems presented with this approach. First of all, the color doesn't match. As hard as I tried, I could not get these colors to match. I have no idea exactly why i think it has something to do with the way smile game builder does lighting for objects versus lighting for tiles but a bigger problem is that tiles in smile game builder cannot be moved copied or pasted so in my benefit section i talk a little more about this but in the end if you can't move a tile it doesn't really fit the modular house concept now we'll take a quick look at what these assets look like in the asset section of Smile Game Builder. I'm going to go to Maps and Objects, and I'll take a look at my brick houses. As you can see, most of the objects just have basic elevation blocking. Some of them, like my doorways, they actually use what we call allow underpass. And some of them, like the flooring, actually have allow underpass and other objects can be placed on top. To make this work properly, and we'll get to this when we talk about the second level, we do need different versions of second level flooring. This comes into play when you try to stack objects on top of one another, and I'll go into more depth than that in some of my other parts. Now let's look at what it takes to build a house using these objects. I'm going to start with my doorway. There is a reason that I have a door with a wall on top. It's not really important for this portion of the tutorial, but suffice it to say, it's a lot easier to have this be one object than to be multiple. Now I'll get my wall and just make sure that I'm doing this right. I'll pull over that other house, put these pieces in place. Like so. And I'll need to get my corner. You might notice that that one corner is the only one that I can place without having to rotate it. But overall, it's not too hard. Just get that other one in place. And let's put on the windows. So that's a level two window. I think I'll start with a level one first. And then I'll place level two on top. So pretty quickly we have the first wall of our house. Now let's go and do the side. This is where it gets a little interesting. Because my walls are oriented forward and because they're not full width, height, and depth, when I start placing these walls, you'll see that they don't exactly fit the side that I want them to be on. 
for expediency, I'm going to just continue building this because once I have these in place, it's not a lot of effort to rotate them correctly to get them facing the right direction, like so. And once I have a whole sidewall constructed, it's also not a lot of work to copy and paste this over and make my whole other wall. So already I've pretty quickly made three sides of my house. Now I need to do the back wall. You might notice as I've been building this house that for every wall placement, I actually click individually. You can click and drag objects. However, it doesn't always go smoothly. And if the object line gets off, it takes probably more effort to fix it than it would have done to just click all the way through. I'll get my corner pieces in place. And then I'll just fix this wall to the correct rotation. Like so. And there is the outside walls of my house. Now before we put the flooring in, we need to put the stairs in. It's much easier to place the stairs and the tiles associated with it than it is to put the floors in first. Now, one important thing about stairs, they cannot be placed on top of objects. So, the one set of tiles that must be placed in this house are the tiles necessary to raise the elevation to the second level. So I'll get my wood floors in place. And I'll raise this there up. So out of the entire modular house, these are the only things that require standard tile and stair based elements. Now let's put in the flooring. I'm going to get my three by three by three to aid in my process of laying floor. And you can see I left a little bit of space here and on the right. I'd like to pretend that that was intentional, but in reality, I just didn't really plan for the exact size of flooring. This is supposed to be modular, so I should be able to work with it. And I did happen to create some three by one by one floors, which make it a little easier to fill in some of this. I'm not able to take this floor and rotate it specifically because, as you can see, the texture of the tiles don't match if I rotate. But then I can just go back to my one by one by one and fill in the rest. And there's my house. Now I do need to make this door work for the demo. So I'm going to delete the one that I created since it has no events associated with it. And I'm going to copy the one that I know actually does have an event. Since this tutorial is not about creating events, I'm only going to show what I made as opposed to building it from scratch. It's pretty simple. I make the events graphic change to an open picture. I make the player walk two places up. And then I change the camera control to allow for the first person view. First person view is necessary in this context because if you have a ceiling above the player, you really can't see the floor the player is on. Now there might be some ways to work through that with Smile Game Builder. However, it seemed a little bit more complicated than it was worth. And it's much easier to just change the camera angle so you can get behind the person and see where they are inside the house. So let's take a look at our house.
here we go. Here's our building. There's our windows. And here's our door. Just like the demonstration, we walk in. And it's a pretty boring house, but it is fully modular. You can kind of even see a little bit of the line between the walls. This could be remedied by using walls that were more than one width or one length. However, it doesn't really matter and it's not really visible unless you're being picky about your walls. And just to show, interestingly enough, if I were using fully first person view, I could actually look inside the house and see what's in there. But now that we have our house, let's talk about a couple of the benefits of using something like this, as opposed to building houses using tile based structures in Smile Game Builder. Well, first of all, you don't have to change the map to get the player to go in the house. A uh, common practice in a lot of these role playing game makers is when you go into a house, which is a pre built structure, you must change your map and now you're inside some mapped version of the house. That is pretty cool because it gives you the opportunity to make a bigger space than what you see from the outside. However, if you like the feel or the aesthetic of walking into a house and keeping it accurate to what it appears on the outside, you really don't have the ability to do that easily. You kind of have to make a really big tile structure and then make a really big tile map. With this, you get the ability to say, Here's my house, and on the inside, this is what it looks like. As far as modular houses go, one of the big advantages of this approach is that this house can be moved. So I'll show here, I'll select what I just created, and I will drag it down. Outside of the tiles, which cannot be moved, everything else came with it. So instead of having to rebuild the house from scratch, if I were using tiles, I can just move it one or two spaces or five spaces or 10. And all I really have to do is rebuild any of the tiles that I happen to have created in order to make the player move from one level to the next. I'm gonna move this back. And the next thing I can do is if I wanted to make a full copy of this house, I can select it just like I did before and do a copy and a paste. So here's our copy pasted house. Now you, what you may notice is there are two things that didn't go with the house this time. So unlike every other thing with objects, Stairs do not go with a copy paste. So you can move them, but you cannot copy and paste them. So the slight variance on doing a copy paste is that you still have to build not only the tiles, but also the stairs. Still not too bad. You still get most of the house. And if you limit your stairs and tiles to just what's necessary to change the player height, then rebuilding those pieces shouldn't take too much effort. Some cool things about this is if you have common modular structures you've created, you can also have a map that just consists of a bunch of different structures that you can copy and paste into whatever map you need to use them. And if you wanted to make slight variations on your house, it really isn't too hard. So if I wanted to take this wall and move it out and then add more things to it, I can do that. Remember that in Smile Game Builder, when you want to build a house out of tiles or a building or structure out of tiles, anytime you want to make a slight variation, you must lower the tiles, change the colors, or redraw them in other places. And it is impossible to copy and paste tile based structures, so you're left having to rebuild everything from hand anytime you want to make a copy of something that already exists. With objects, that's not true. And you have equal flexibility if you can make objects that follow a tile type structure or something that roughly matches the grid. Making the object tiles match the grid helps significantly in being able to align the pieces and place them on the map. Overall, I found this to be a pretty effective structure and in parts two and three, I'll talk a little bit more about how to get other things into these houses and make them interact with the player properly. 
this tutorial and its parts assumes that you have some kind of basic knowledge with Smile Game Builder and you're able to work your way through some of the standard usage of the tool set. If you're still learning and you want some better basic tutorials, please check out Companion Wolf's video tutorials or his blog, Smile Game Builder Athenaeum, which I've pasted links to in the description below. You can also check out my website, mati.com, for updates on this tutorial and other projects that I'm working on. This is the end of part one of my tutorial. Keep a lookout for part two, which should be coming in the next couple weeks. And I will see you next time.